A Radio2.it oggi parliamo di una cosa molto particola- particolare, siamo in collegamento con l'Australia, con Monica Gagliano. Hello Monica, welcome to Radio2.it. Hello. Ok, so let's switch to English to talk about this uh, uh, interesting topic. It's about uh, plants, uh, vibration, sounds, uh, something like music maybe. I don't know, we found out your, your study, this uh, super interesting, is about uh, how plants... Uh, listen to music or listen to sounds to discover food, maybe. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, can you explain us your study a little bit? Because we have uh, an idea that uh, some kind of uh, plants listen in Led Zeppelin, but I don't know if it's quite right. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, there's been uh, for, for decades we have heard of, like, you know, Mozart is better than Beethoven and all of that kind of stuff. Um, my research is uh, has been trying to be a bit more um, objective, I guess is the right word. <laughs> and uh, so I'm not looking at music as such, although, of course, as you know better than me, uh, music is made out of uh, a combination of vibrations and, and different frequencies. So the fact that maybe plants like Mozart better than Beethoven or whatever they, they do like, okay. uh, it might be all to do with the kind of frequencies that they are contained in those uh, pieces of music. But um, so the research uh, actually did, uh, the initial idea of the research uh, did uh, come from the more folkloristic aspect of this story because um, the idea that plants um, listen to music or that we can talk to them and they will hear us Mm -hmm. it's been in um, not just uh, recently but for millennia it's been in the human story okay and uh, and wherever you look in the anthropological records as well you'll see that there are stories of uh, shamans witch doctors or whatever you want to call them who have been like you know the person in the group that will be um, liaising with these uh, vegetable others And um, so I, as a scientist, uh, for me, it was interesting to find out whether a story that persists for so long in our culture as human, um, either it's just a story that we really like and that's fine, okay. or uh, maybe there is a grain of truth in it. And, uh, and I think for me, the role of science is to you know, ask the question and see what the answer might be. Yeah, it's not, a, so, a, a, it's not, it's not a magic thing. It's like uh, you want no. to prove it. Uh, that's the goal. Yeah, and, uh, and I was prepared to also find nothing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, uh, As all the but, researchers uh, often, do, because you have a, like a, a jump in the, in, the, in the nowhere, maybe. Just doing research yeah, is exactly. like... Okay. Exactly. And often is the case that when we are brave enough to ask strange questions, we find very interesting answers. And um, so that was a few years ago, we had the first uh, sort of publication demonstrating the plants, not only they are listening, but they're actually emitting their own sounds. And we can now, because we have the technology to do so, we can actually uh, detect the vibration that they are emitting. And then, of course, uh, play back vibration to them and see what they do. And, uh, and this was a few years ago uh, with colleagues actually from the University of Bristol. And, um, and then, of course, though, for me, being an ecologist by training, uh, the real question was like, but what does it really mean to the plant? Okay. And so um, water being one of the essential elements that not just a plant, but anybody needs. I thought, okay, let's see if, um, if, you, if plants can actually find water just by uh, listening and they for do. it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. so they do. <laughs> they don't. They don't only uh, speak with vibration. Maybe it's one of their way to communicate uh, to emit vibration. And they also you, you prove that there is a way to. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what uh, they are doing, but they are searching for the right way to the water or to the to the food. Let's say yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you know, acoustics in general and vibrate, it's, you know, it's a mechanoreception uh, problem, basically. And, uh, and plants have plenty of uh, mechanoreceptors, which means that they can detect uh, vibration of all kinds. And we already know that, uh, you know, there's been quite a, a considerable amount of uh, research done on, uh, on mechanoreceptors in terms of touch. 
and of course uh, sound really is almost like a touch at a distance so and we know that very well that's why music touches us we are not so far from the plants let's say it. I, I i know that um, I, 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 um, i read your um, research field and you seems to let's say love nature very much i i, I have a quote it's uh, like expanding your our perception on animals plant and nature in general it is correct it is your field yeah yeah and i mean like uh, again um do you know otherwise what kind of science are we actually doing if we are asking the same question all the time and sort of looking for the answers that we already have or we know that we we are gonna get then okay. we're not really discovering everything anything we're just uh, re-searching okay okay <laughs> and instead i like to that's, search that's fine that's correct and how many plants you tested uh, different plants or maybe just one Uh, for this uh, particular study uh, that is, uh, you know, in relation to the sound of water, it was just one species uh, and it was just the humble green pea. Okay. And it's actually, uh, I think it's interesting that it had to be the green pea because uh, the green pea was the one that Mendel used to sort of kickstart the entire field of, you know, what became the genetics yeah. uh, research. <laughs> And, uh, and of course, genetics is about really looking at the details under, under, under the ground okay. of the layer of, um, of being of a plant or, or an animal, while uh, my studies are actually trying to uh, look at the individual. So I'm not so much interested in what the genes are doing, but what is the individual doing in relation to the okay. environment okay. And, and all the things that are in in its environment, whether that is animals, other plants, other organisms of other kinds, okay. and also the actual physical environment. Do you think so there is a... Do, do, do you think there... Yeah. The, okay. Do you think there is um, enough publication, enough debate on this theme, let's say uh, plants like uh, uh, true uh, nature things, true uh, as humans, yeah, they, we are not so... Maybe normally you don't think uh, um, humans and plants in a in the same uh, level, let's say it. But do you think there is uh, enough debate on that? And what is your position? Um, um, I think that there is always space for more debate. Okay. <laughs> um, I think like as with much of the research in the history of science, um, this kind of research is at, the, at its infancy. And so, um, yeah, at the moment, uh, is still in a very delicate state, I guess. Okay. And so it's important that we talk about it and we talk about it also in the right way. I'm not trying to make plants like humans. I'm just trying to say that they are persons like we are. And persons is not just a, you know, it's not just a, a human being, but it can be anything. And the reason why the, this definition is important is because when we give personhood to others beside the human, then we can start talking about the ethical and also the legal aspects of um, how of we relate with these others and how we use them or even abuse them. <laughs> okay, okay, I got your point. And Monica, how does your, your, your passion for this field, for this research field start? What was your... From my garden, actually. Ah, okay. <laughs> From my garden. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It was just... Um, it was just almost uh, by chance, I would say, and often this is the case again, is one of those stories. <laughs> true research uh, style. Uh, <laughs> yeah, true, true yeah, research well, style. I was a marine by training, so okay. I've, I worked a lot on uh, coral reef fishes, and, and actually uh, at the time when I sort of started working on plants, it sounded like a bit of a jump uh, mm -hmm. in terms of research. And now I can just see, in hindsight, of course, it's easier, but I can just see that actually they're always just the same questions that I was asking then, I'm still <laughs> asking them now. And basically it's like, what are we? What are they? We are all the same. Okay, they are not right? so they are not so easy answering questions. So it's also quite normal that you are still they are still doing them, just <laughs> answering them. Yeah. And do you find any particular sound or any particular vibration that uh Uh, the plant like or the, the plant prefer? I don't know. Well, actually, it's an interesting question because uh, that's, that's definitely one of the directions for future research. But even just with the preliminary stuff that we have available now, 
the first study a few years ago, one of the, the things that we did was to play back different frequency. In this case, in that study, it was a corn plant. Mm -hmm. And we play different frequencies uh, one at a time to see what the corn roots will do. And, um, and of course, even that question is like, what a plant do is like yeah. what kind of yeah, thing yeah, yeah, yeah. you're <laughs> okay. exactly so you have to allow the plants to show you and be watchful anyway so and what we found was that uh, at the between the 200 and 300 uh, hertz the the roots of the corn would turn towards the sound but of course we had no idea and probably we still don't have an idea of why would the roots turn to that sound okay so we, we can make frequency. a music compilation for them not not now <laughs> we will <laughs> what, what, what is interesting is that with this study with the water um and if anybody is interested in the electronic material that is supplementary to the paper uh, there is uh, an actual um, sonogram of the recording that we were playing back to the water to the plant and and what i find interesting is that a lot of energy in that water sound is around the 200 300 hertz mark okay so i that if that is uh, what the to the plant means water <laughs> okay okay so this is your your future intention on researchers maybe just to find out uh, the true the true frequent the, the the good frequencies not the true ones maybe it's uh, well, it kind of language i guess you know okay that plants are obviously utilizing from the environment to to connect and interact and and have a, a dialogue yeah okay uh, monica do you play an instrument too i do oh okay dear. because yeah I, i'm trying to imagine you playing <laughs> something play. yeah what, what do you play i really try to play more than i play <laughs> okay what what do you like what do you like to play when you play what, which kind of instrument Well, I am self-taught on a sitar. Okay. And wow. Um, I also play the ukulele, okay. which is fun. <laughs> Because everybody now is imagining you playing like one note or another to a plant and see what's happening. And maybe it's not the incorrect way because we said uh, researchers' way are mysterious, but uh, usually uh, <laughs> interesting in what we are finding. <laughs> I would say that most likely I would play one note at a time just because that is my extent <laughs> of my capabilities for playing music rather than anything else. But yeah. We're trying. <laughs> okay, you can try, you can try. Monica, thank you very much for uh, your time and your explanation. It's a super interesting argument. I'm not so... Um Uh, I'm not so prepared in biology and this kind of stuff, but I, I will try to, to speak to my plants and to play them some music. And if something is happening, it's popping up, I will text you and we'll say. <laughs> Good, let me know. <laughs> okay. Thank you for Thank everything. you very much. Ciao. Ciao.